say this every episode, but I can't believe we're at episode 13. I can't believe we're like over halfway through. I can't believe it's already been a week since we got the new opening and the new ending, which I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. I watched that ending and I listened to that ending at least a thousand times over in the past week. I played it at least a couple times a day, every day while I'm like uh, doing work on my computer or if I'm farming for FGO or Magia record. I just had that shit playing like and I don't mean to call it shit. I, I mean that in the most respectful way. Like that ending is just really good and I can't wait for the full ending to come out. I believe at the 19th for us, but the 20th in Japan. So it's going to be great. I think it's going to be one of the best endings in the Fate series. In my opinion, it already is one of the best endings in the Fate series. My, probably my favorite next to Memoria from Fate Zero. It's that good to me. But enough about the music. Let's get straight into this episode because I know this episode is going to be lit because it does have your girl or Rishi girl. Not my girl, but your girl. But uh, she, she is a cool, she's a cool girl, not gonna lie. But uh, let's go see what they do in this episode. Okay, starting off with the type moon thing. I see them. That, that means this episode is gonna be serious. That's usually what it means for anime when it just starts off with the credits and, and like all that stuff. That's when you know it's shit's gonna go down. Look how lonely she is. I like how serious she's talking and she has this whole monologue about humans and life and death and everything. But we know later on down the road, she's going to be a very comedic character along with Ishar. But I dig this character development, not going to lie. Are you going to start the opening? It's going to be the opening, right? Oh, no. No opening. Okay, no opening. I guess I guess they were like, yeah, this is going to be serious. So let's go. Let's just go straight into it. Oh, shit. Okay. I don't know if you guys noticed, but when anime don't play their openings, it it's getting serious. I, I, I don't know how much I could stress that enough. Two more days, that means maybe two more episodes. Who knows, we might get it in the next episode when the Gorgon stuff starts to go down again. That doesn't mean you can't you can't go back on your choice. It might be your first choice, but that doesn't mean you can't go back on it. Oh dang, she could earthbend in this motherfucker? She was about to like smack the shit out of Ritzka, damn. Oh my god. <laughs> just like three pillars of earth just smacking the shit out of Mashi's shield. Oh, there you go. Now Gil's finally gonna, like you could have done that like two minutes earlier, Gil, but hey, that's okay. Is he floating? <laughs> oh, there you go. I like how Ishar loses her divinity in the underworld and l effectively loses her powers. And I know they explained that in the last episode, but, and Castorgill's the one that's dead, but Castorgill's still able to use his gate of Babylon. That's, that's kind of funny to me. I don't know. All right, Mashu, Mashu with the moves. All right, I see them with the animation flex. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you can't even get close to the King of Heroes. Oh, there, he's, he's gonna hit it? <laughs> Yo, oh, that, that was smooth, that was smooth. He's gonna blow up behind him? Yeah, yes! <laughs> that was badass. He might be a caster, but he's still the King of Heroes. He's still lit, dude. But don't, don't underestimate him just because he's dead and because he's a caster. He's still the King of Heroes. Yo, I like this remix of the battle theme that they're playing right now. It's really good. I can't wait till the full OC is out so I can listen to it. Because I know a majority of it is remixes of the in-game music, but it's still nice. So Fujimaru just gonna run up to Mashu and like grab her hand again, just like in the movie, in first order. Oh my god, Royal Authority. Yo, Castigil, I I'm just saying, Gilgamesh as a whole, busted. Yo, is this gonna become a one-on-one? -on -one? Castigil versus Arishigal in her ghostly form? You think that's gonna work? You think spamming projectiles against Gilgamesh, the king of projectiles will work. And I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, but Emir is here. Okay, shut up, shut up. Oh, it just, it just got real, man. And Castigirl's still not giving a fuck. <laughs> still not giving a slight shit. Oh my God, th the size difference. Yo, are you really gonna try? Yeah, you, you better, you better back down, Ishar. Are you getting jelly? Are you getting jealous, Urishiga? I know you're you're a little bit jealous of your sister and you resent her a little bit because she has the freedom to go do whatever she wants while you're stuck in the underworld managing it, doing your job. I understand that. But listen, Fujimaru got you, fam. Yeah, can we just take a second to appreciate the voice acting, Kana Ueda especially? Like all the voices are great, uh, don't get me wrong. But Kana Ueda is just, like when she's talking as the big ghost thing, like you could still tell it's her but it just sounds so different as well. And then when it transitions into actual Rishigal, the talent of these voice actresses and voice actors is just blows my mind all the time. Ooh. Oh my God. Yeah, she kind of looks like Einzel Gaon, not gonna lie. She has some Einzel Gaon action going on. Ooh, 
Yo, imagine if that's what Lord Camelot did in addition to putting your defense up. If you get hit with a Noble Phantasm, it reflects back into the enemies. I feel like that would have been a cool addition to the to Mashi's NP, but hey, it's kind of too late for that. Okay, there she is in her true form. Legs and everything. Yo, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Urshiel's design. I don't know about you guys. Well, I, I, a majority of you guys are definitely a fan of her design. I guess Shar's cool, but I think in terms of design, Arishigal beats her by a mile. Yeah, that's right. He noticed. Yeah, plenty of times. Like five times? I don't know. A lot. Like half of the first part of this series. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of obvious. Every time you sneezed, you've transformed back. Got her ass. Blinded by jewels, man. You got bribed through jewels and treasures. Hassan, you son of a fuck. Yeah, that ass though. Just severed her from the from the contract. Yeah, yeah. Okay, for a second, I forgot what actually happened. But we good now. You got smacked in the head, fam. Shouldn't you know Gilgamesh? Shouldn't you know who he is? Or is that a rhetorical question? <laughs> that voice, man. Big Gil is like, I recognize that voice, but you don't look like Kotomine Kide, my dude. Ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho. The next time we see Hassan, it's gonna be disgustingly badass. I don't know why he used the word disgustingly as an adjective to describe his badassery later on, but you guys will see. And I know I talk a lot of shit about him gameplay wise and how Jack is better, but I, even I can't deny that he's he's a straight badass, especially here in Babylonia. Yo, if, like if there's anyone watching that's not shipping this at this point, I don't know who you are, bro. You need to chill out. And accept this ship because this ship is as real as anything else. I mean, Mashi's right there, but you know. I know Katsukuro already joined them, but shouldn't Hassan sever her contract too? Or is that not necessary with Katsukuro for whatever reason? I, I just realized that Hassan kind of cock blocked her a little bit. I think she was about to confess her love to Fujimaru. Then Hassan just went in like, nah, bro. Not now, not today. Yeah, it's nothing more than sibling jealousy. It happens in every sibling relationship, I'm sure. Well, most of them, I'm sure there's a lot of very healthy relationships out there but you know it's just it's just how siblings work whether you're a god a goddess or a normal human like your boy it happens no shit where else would you return <laughs> like are you gonna return to to uruk it's like yeah where else <gasps> oh, i didn't expect this in this episode no And there he is, awake. Did they really keep his dead body on the throne? I don't think he was there last episode, but okay. Yeah, I didn't expect that a uh, little bit with Enkidu and Gilgamesh. That was from the first episode too. Oh, okay. All right. So there's a lot to unpack in this episode. Well, not really. I mean, they, they recruited Rishigal. Rishigal finally, you know, was out of the Three Goddess Alliance thanks to Hassan severing officially severing the contract but she was gonna join anyway but i guess there needed to be like a legitimate cutting of the contract or something along those lines but yeah very interesting stuff um again i got i gotta commend the voice actors and the voice actresses kind of a way to just blew my mind with this episode especially just the fact that she's able to transition from a deep very menacing i guess threatening voice to the Rishigal slash Ishtar voice that we all are accustomed to. So I, I just want to commend her real quick for that. Of course, the other voices like, I mean, Sekito Mikazu and everyone else, Nobunaga Shimazaki, like all, all of them are awesome. And speaking of awesome, this this ending, I'm just saying this ending's so good. When the full version comes out, it's game over, bruh. I'm still wondering if they're going to play a new opening next episode because they didn't play an opening this episode. Which usually means it's gonna go down. It's gonna go super down. Is there a secret ending that's gonna happen? Okay, there's a secret ending. Yeah, Enkidu and Rishigal were homies, man. It's his body. It's his. It's Enkidu's body for sure. Oh man, next episode's gonna be amazing. Oh 
the next couple, I, I mean, li- listen, every episode has been amazing in their own right. And I, I've given every episode a good review, like a decent review at the very most. This episode was no exception. The Riskal versus Mashu slash Castigill was crazy as hell. I mean, I just found it funny that, again, I find it funny that Castigill was able to still use his powers and use the Gate of Babylon with his royal authority. I think he, he mentioned it, that he's still able to use it because his royal authority will allow him to do that. But I don't know. That's just it's kind of funny how he's able to bypass and basically bullshit his way into fighting anyone, anywhere, and under any circumstances. It's just it's just kind of kind of the Gilgamesh thing to do, you know. But yeah, Rishgal is now part of the squad. Katsukoro joined the squad. Well, Ishar joined the squad first, and now we have Rishgal. So now all there is to do is to defeat Gorgon and her underling Kingu. And then that's when we get to the meat and potatoes and just the craziness of Babylonia. The reason why a lot of people love it. Uh, well, one of the reasons why a lot of people love it is because towards the end, stuff goes, gets really crazy. So I can't wait for that part of Babylonia. And I, again, I feel so redundant and repetitive every episode I watch. But literally, it's going to be crazy. It's really going to be that good. And man, Hassan showing up and like severing the contract for a second I, I i forgot what exactly he did at that moment from the story and i was like yo you son of a bitch and then i was just like wait no no he didn't actually kill her he, obviously he didn't actually kill her it's just like when i'm in the moment i just lose all sense of reason and just i don't know i i forget of what actually happened but no hasan is not a son of a bitch uh he actually helped out pretty hard i wonder if he was just watching the entire time from the sideline like okay all right, this is this is the part where I come in. All right, let's go, let's go do that. But I mean, he he could have waited like five more seconds because Arishigal was definitely about to confess her love. At least I think so. So Hassan, come on, don't don't cock block like that. Like, come on, come. On. He could have waited like five seconds. Like it, t- it takes five seconds to say I love you, bro. I don't know. Maybe Hassan, maybe Hassan has a thing for Arishigal. Who knows? As as underworld buddies, maybe maybe he has a thing for her. Maybe he's just like all of you guys, all you Arishigal fans out there. But yeah, uh, great episode. I love the bit that they had with Enkidu's death again. The, the last time they showed that scene, I believe, was from the very first episode within the first 20 seconds. So this time they added dialogue to it. I think it was the exact same angles and everything, which is fine. That's cool. But they actually added dialogue. So that's that's just crazy. And Enkidu saying that you're going to find more outstanding treasures and and crazier stuff and you, you don't necessarily need me and stuff along those lines i was just like yo ed kitty no you're his number one treasure bruh you know what he doesn't even look at you as a treasure he looks at you as a friend something more than a treasure so i don't know just emotional stuff and it's just it's gonna get more and more emotional get more and more epic as we go on so hope you guys enjoyed this episode this is definitely one of my more favorite episodes 100 percent top five out of the 13 we got so far maybe even top three like this is a very good great episode they didn't show the opening so we had more more screen time for the fight more screen time for the development and the dialogue which i really like and now my hope that they're gonna change the opening again next episode is actually higher well we don't know we don't really know they might change they might still replay the same opening next episode when we get to the map change and we get to the tiamat arc that's probably when they're gonna whip out the new new opening if they reuse the same song with different graphics again i'll be like okay all right that's cool but we, we'll see we'll see huh so yeah like the video if you like it dislike it if you dislike it and comment down below let me know what you think about this episode let me know what you think about the fight let me know what you think about the enkidu flashback let me know what you think about the voice actors the actresses everything the whole package as a whole uh, in regards to this episode and also let me know what what episode or what scene what epic moment you're looking forward to the most uh, from episode 14 and onward because from here on out it's just going to be epic shit out of epic shit out of epic shit i don't think there's any more mellow like kind of light-hearted moments so to speak i think everything from here on out will be serious and will just be crazy so let me know what you guys are looking for forward to as far as those kinds of stuff and of course subscribe to become a supporting character to me the main character because without you guys i'd be the only character which would suck so i'll see you guys next week in episode 14 bye bye